Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. We're coming at you on November 27th, the day after Thanksgiving. <clears throat> um, it's uh, still kind of uh, getting through uh, whatever happened in the election. But before we jump into any of that, I want to introduce you to the panel. Up in our left-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett, a, a pilot in the state of California. And up in our right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Before we get into any of the topics, I just wanted to let you know that there is a way to give feedback. It's at counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. Uh, if you're watching live, you can send questions that we might try and answer during the show. And uh, if you're seeing it uh, after the fact... <laughs> Um, we'd love to hear from you if you have any experiences related to the COVID lockdowns or, um, you know, the riots that have happened, uh, if your business is hurt, lost your job, any of that kind of stuff. Um, also, if you're interested or if you're thinking about leaving California, uh, we kind of want to get the perspectives of some of those people. And we've interviewed a few on the show already. And so we'd certainly be willing to consider that. So please send any of that to counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. Okay, well, um, let's jump right into the situation. As we said, that uh, we're we're kind of uh, uh, not sure exactly how we're transitioning on the presidency at this point. It looks like Biden won, but there's still legal challenges. And um, Biden, though, has uh, started to talk about some of the stuff he's going to do. And one of the things that it sounds like he probably will do is to reinstate uh, something that. Uh, uh, Trump canceled, which is uh, implicit bias and diversity training in a lot of state agencies. And uh, this is something that is kind of kind of interesting because Trump didn't really address this until just months before the election, uh, right. when I guess he kind of realized what was happening, that they were spending money in a lot of, of government agencies uh, to essentially teach um, uh, kind of some intersectionality stuff, uh, implicit bias, just the assumption that everybody is, you know, racially biased in the in the workplace and, uh, you know, another diversity training. And, um, you know, I actually had an experience myself of recently going through some of that, too. But uh, but this is something where Biden, you know, seems to be sort of, you know, the religion of his party, I guess. And so that they're probably going to reinstate what Trump did. And just curious if any of you guys have any thoughts on that. Well, I have a question, a real quick question. Uh, the the diversity training that Trump canceled was federal only, right? Not yes. not to do with states. So the states right. are still free to uh, either teach it or not teach it. And this is only regarding the, the federal government. Is that correct? That is correct. That okay. is correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, we we did that one show on it. Um, uh, anyway. I think we did, or did we? Yeah, we did. We spoke about it. Actually, we had one one of our good to me one of our best shows about and it was about yeah. that race issue. Uh, yeah, and, and just to okay. let you know, we we've talked several times on this show about different issues around race because in 2020, you I mean, you literally can't get away from racial identity politics. It's just right. part of part of the foundation. Anyway, sorry, sorry, Tim. I jump back uh, to you. Yeah, no, I, I really don't have anything to add that hasn't been said already, but. Maybe Leon. I mean, th this is this is going to be a, a tremendous waste of resources and and money if they start doing that on all the federal occupations. But you know, what, <laughs> Leon, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's it's just the, the 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 continued match towards destroying our values that came from Western civilization. Mm -hmm. These people see Western civilization, you know, individual rights, property rights, uh, you know, capitalism, all these things. They see these things as evil, and it need to be destroyed. And all of these things, critical race theory, all this diversity training, and all these sort of things, are nothing but this continued match to destroy it and take us to this utopia, this damn utopia that is going to change our lives and make all the puppies warmer and all the skies bluer. It is a bunch of damn nonsense. And I don't know when we're going to stop this thing. I mean, you look look around us. You know what? Years ago, years ago, um. You know, this the, here's, here's the destruction of my, my career uh, with the state. Years ago, they used to have this, 
diversity training and they required us to go to it. And I refused. And I have never attended this, this diversity training, damn nonsense. Well, you know, of course, you know, that was a black mark against me. Black mark, you know, that's that's kind of a funny statement, you know. <laughs> yes. And but the whole idea, the whole idea was that this political correctness is nothing but a march to destroy the values of Western civilization, who which have brought us to where we are, individual rights with a high standard of living. That's all they are trying to do. They're trying to take us to this damn utopia, which we'll never get to. Yeah, and, and this is one of the the, the the kind of craziness of it. You know, it's, it's you mentioned that it's it's about individual justice. You know, I mean, that's what we really need to be after. And and if we if we appreciate individual justice, we should solve all those other problems, right? I mean, all those other problems should go away if we focus on individual justice. And we recently just had Prop 16 that they tried to pass here in California, which literally wanted to take out of the Constitution of the state uh, that the state could not discriminate on the basis of race or sex. And they wanted to remove that. The same people who are trying to push this this diversity training into, uh, you know, uh, government and and other businesses. So it, it really makes you I mean, it really lets you see what it is that they're after. This isn't something where they're they're looking to remove uh, uh, discrimination on the basis of race. They literally want to engage in discrimination on the basis of race. Yeah. So, And you know, they always, and the, and the thing about it, they always try to find, whenever they want to, to bring about their leftist agenda, they always want to find some nice name to call it. Oh, diversity training. Now, who could be against that, right? Until you find out what is the rot within what they are trying to teach what the indoctrination they are trying to provide to our children. Until you find that out, you this nice, sweet name, song so, so nice and wonderful. Diversity training. We all should be sensitive to race. What the hell does that mean anyway? No, seriously. What the hell does that mean, being sensitive to race? All of us belong to some race or the other. Anyway, race is a manufactured thing by, 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 by human beings anyway. But what, what does it mean to say that we should be sensitive to race? Yeah. Then we should be sensitive to ourselves. I really am puzzled by this, that yeah. people keep talking this nonsense. I, I went through eight years of uh, Catholic schools with Irish Catholic nuns teaching me. I already have enough guilt feelings, uh, you know, pent up inside from all of that. And I don't need more <laughs> by going to this uh, training that's, that's going to make me out as the bad guy. Well, well, and then, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that's the old mantra of these yeah. diversity training. You guys and your whiteness with their white privilege, and that's what it's all about. You're trying to oppress people like me. Is that what they're, they're trying to teach us? Uh, I don't know. It could be, but judging from the color change in your beard, you're turning white on us, Leon. <laughs> you're getting whiter all the time. <laughs> you just gotta damn. start it. Yeah, yeah. Throw the, some up there on top too. <laughs> Well, well, you know, you know, Tim. You see, this is just, just the thing. I'm not, I'm not helping them destroy whiteness. You know, I'm trying to yeah. help you guys. I'm trying yeah, to help. You guys. I see that. I see that. I've been watching. I've been watching your beard every, uh, every session here, and it's getting wider all the time. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's a lost cause already. I don't, I don't, I don't even try to change it. It's a lost cause. Well, well, and, and and here's part of the issue. I mean, with the craziness of, of of what these people are after is they want us to take action on something that we can't measure. I mean, exactly how white is Leon's beard? You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what metric are we going to use yeah. to determine if it's a black beard or if it's a white beard, right? I mean, <laughs> and, 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 you know, one of the things that's interesting about Leon's beard is it's changing. Whereas, you know, they're looking for something, I suppose, doesn't change, I guess. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Elizabeth Warren couldn't figure out what race she was. Oh, and yeah. she, <laughs> she went through a genetic test that said, I guess she was one in 2000th or something, yeah. you know. And some, 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 minuscule, <laughs> some minuscule number like that. Yeah. You know, but you know, but even that, the, the issue of my beard raises, raises an interest in this, you know. Look at me now. So, yeah, my beard is white. But look at the color of my hair, man. Yeah, it's never, yeah. Been, it's never been dyed. Look at the color of my hair. So, yeah, so that's what, amazing. So, so the metric now is what? What is the metric we want to use? My I white don't know. Hair or my black yeah. hair. Which one? The Which location one? of the hair. I mean, is that now important? 
Yeah. The location is lower on the face or higher. <laughs> Tell me this thing. Yeah, really. I think. <laughs> I think if you go through that training, the first thing they do is tell you to shave that stuff. Shave off. that beard here. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not helping the cause, you know. You're no, supposed okay. to destroy the whiteness here. Get rid of the damn beard. <laughs> no, you know, you know, this is something though that's important. If you're ever going to craft a law <laughs> or regulation, you have to have a measurable metric to know when that law is being complied with or violated. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the idea that these people want to have something that says you're black or you're white, how do we tell? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's essentially what they're doing, right? They, they, they literally don't have a way to tell, but they're going to say that they're going to fix everything based upon something they can't measure. And yeah. I, you know, hey, so. hey, they, they're getting used to that, though, with the sex thing. You know, there's more than two sex <laughs> There's, there's, there's a, true, there could be true. there's an unlimited number of sexes out there so it's, it's yeah, not this male yeah. female nonsense yeah yeah and right. so if that's true then there could be a bazillion different races and you know they're used to that kind of stuff apparently that kind yeah. of confusion well i don't i don't mind their confusion is one they is when they want to impose it upon yeah. us when i have the problem exactly yeah, yeah. And that's exactly. that's truly the libertarian perspective, which is why we don't want these guys to, you know, force. Yeah. Why why we don't want the government solution because it forces yeah. it on everybody. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. But you know, speaking of another crazy government program that's just along the same vein, and it, you know, California. This is uh, this happened a little bit earlier in the year in September, but California actually passed. And of course, we're speaking of California. It's like why why are we always <laughs> you know here in California? But anyways. Uh, it's a it's a reparations task force passed, and we, we I don't think we made it to that on the show in a previous show yet. But so I wanted to get to it on this show that was sort of racial focused. But um, the, uh, the reparations task force, the uh, uh, the Congress or the, the the legislature in California passed it, and Governor Newsom signed it, and essentially it's to design a commission that will uh, study the lingering impacts of slavery and make recommendations to lawmakers by 2023 um, on details of how to compensate for that, which is kind of strange for California to be engaging in that on itself. Um, you know, the idea that this was sort of a, a slavery was a national problem, took place uh, a long time ago. And I'm not sure if we're hitting technical problems or not. But uh, anyways, is, is, is this is something... Uh, where, you know, how, how do you decide how much, just like we were saying, how how white or black is somebody? Well, how much were you affected by slavery, too, you know? And, and uh, you know, how we're, how we're, what level of reparations, how shall we measure this? And it just seems to be another hopeless cause of the left. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Is that because California was uh, not even a part of the United States when slavery was uh, in that, was uh, a, a part of the laws of the United States, and then after the the uh, Civil War, it was uh, or I shouldn't call it that the war between the states. It was uh, it was uh, abolished, and so uh, yeah, what's that got to do with California? If anything, uh, California ought to give itself back to Mexico, the people they took it from. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, if, if, if they're so a, concerned about writing the injustice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. And, and yeah. so we just need to cede the state back to Mexico if we're, we're going to be having any kind of talk about reparations. You talk about somebody that was stiffed out of a, some nice land. It's Mexico being <laughs> stiffed out of California. So uh, there you go. Anyway, so what do you think, Leon? <laughs> so this this bill this bill is nothing but is nothing but feel good for white liberals. That's all it is. Okay, and they're gonna make all of us victims. You know, all of us who uh, me they're gonna make me into a victim. I wasn't I wasn't born here. I do have yeah. slavery ancestry, but I wasn't born here. I have no connection to American slavery, none whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. But they're going to make all of us into victims. And they're going to make all you guys, all you guys just happen to have the right who you or the wrong you, depending on how you look at it, they're going to make all of you guys criminals by saying that you're responsible for the rest of us who happen to have darker hue. This yeah. is madness. This is madness incorporated. They're, because they're not, people. Go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I, I'm interrupting because uh, 
you know, they, they would have given you a thousand bucks in reparations, but because of your beard, they got to cut that in half. It's only 500 bucks. Unless you shave it off, then you get the full yeah. grand. Damn, Tim, you should have never told me that. Cap, no, come on. <laughs> no, no, I feel the injustice now. No, yeah, feel see, <laughs> see that? Uh, oh, well, you, you, you know, well, well, what's so hopeless about this, too, is is how do you decide, you know, you, you decide to pay somebody today. Uh, maybe maybe a few generations got skipped on reparations. And then there's going to be future generations that probably is this government program. So probably they'll be worse off than they were after the program, most likely. But, but yeah. th 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 then what's going to happen then? I mean, uh, essentially, how are we assuming that giving one guy a pile of money is going to fix this. Certainly we know the government's war on poverty didn't fix this. I mean, the government's war on poverty implicitly has always been to try and right wrongs and, and bring supposedly different people up, you know, at different rates and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet when we look at the war on poverty, we're about where we started minus trillions of dollars. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, you know what they say? You know what they say? There was a war on poverty and poverty won, right? You know that, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, this is, this is craziness. This is a second, a second, yeah, a second great society program. We're going to fix all the wrongs of the past by, by, you know, by acknowledging, oh, we, certain people were enslaved and the impact have lasted all of these years. And now we're going to give some people some money and everything is going to be nice and wonderful. For crying out loud, stop this damn nonsense, please. Please. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of other, you know, race related stuff that's going on, that's kind of crazy um, uh, in uh, after the Biden won, uh, there was actually kind of a, a weird thing happened. I believe it was here at a local school district in California, but um, a uh, the, the wife of a school board president apparently was upset at the re election results and she tweeted um uh, re regarding Kamala Harris, all she needed to be qualified was a black, you know, and then P word essentially, and no brain needed. Okay. And, and so that, that made, you know, some people, you know, upset. I mean, it seemed like, you know, this is kind of a weird thing, you know, to, for somebody to be tweeted. And I guess the president of the school board, I believe had to step down from his position. But it does kind of beg the question that if if race and intersectionality is so important to so many people, you know, is there any truth to, to this kind of, uh, you know, thing? I mean, it's it's sad. I would hate I, I hate to think that that's why anybody is getting any particular position or people are voting for anybody. But if that is the focus of so many people to say, oh, what you know, we have to measure every drop of melanin, I guess, that that may be in your system. I, I just, you know, uh, it's it, it just I, I guess th this it seems inevitable that this is the type of thing people are going to be talking about or thinking when somebody is is, uh, you know, given a job like this or, or uh, voted for a system like this when when a big part of the discussion is about race, you know, when they're trying to decide who to elect. I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts um, on that? I, I mean, it, it is clear. I mean, what, what, what that woman said was despicable. There's no doubt about that. But she has uh, her right of free speech. Now, I don't, I, I don't like what she said. I mean, but we have spoke on, we, we spoke about the, on the show about the issues surrounding the selection of Kamala Harris. I mean, this woman could have chosen her words a little better, I think, personally. But Kamala Harris was primarily selected because Joe Biden was trying to appease the, um, the, the black community, which voted for him in heavy numbers, who saved him during the, um, during the, the primary. And then he turned around and made two racist statements. So he was stuck. He had to pick. He had no. to pick up a woman. Oh so yeah, yeah. Stuck. For anybody yeah. who's not aware, yeah, Joe Biden during the campaign says, uh, "If you ain't voting for me, you ain't black." I yes. mean, that's what he literally told people. So, right. and then and then he said, and then he said that uh, blacks blacks all think alike. Those those were not his words, yeah. but he did imply that they were monolith. So, but 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 the point is though, <clears throat> whenever this is the identity politics that the Democrats play, they play it and they play it very well. Okay, that's how they get their votes. And look at and look at all the, the difficulties right now about fraud allegations that is ongoing right now as we speak. Where do you think the fraud occur? In major cities that are democratic and 
primarily black. That's where, that's where it is right now as we speak. So of course, you're going to have people making statements like this woman made. Well, it's an idiotic statement. It's despicable. But these things are going to happen when you play in identity politics. How do you avoid that? And then everybody wants to get upset because of the statement the woman made. And it's, it's worse. The woman made a statement and her husband is paying the price for it. Now, talk about yeah. crap here. Okay, yeah. this, is a, this, is, this, is beyond, this is beyond the pale now here that somebody else is paying for a mistake of, of, of his, his wife in, in this particular case. But this is what identity, identity politics produces. This sort of thing. Yeah, if, if you divide us by race, how is it possible then for anybody to avoid race in their analysis of anything if, if everything is measured and divided by race? The exact point. The exact point. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up about the guy, the husband paying the, the price. I, I'm trying to still trying to wrap my head around that one. Where's that yeah. one come from? It's yeah, like it's like I wouldn't have resigned, you know. It's <laughs> fire me if you want. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah but, right, exactly. Yeah, you, you, you want to fire me for something my wife tweeted or whatever? Fire me, but uh, you know I wouldn't resign and just you know lay lay down like that. But anyway, there we have it. Yeah. Well, you know, there's uh, one other uh, story I wanted to get to before we run out of time here. Um, during the riots, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of going through some of the aftermath of all that, I guess. To, I, I suppose we'll be untangling some of the legal issues around that for quite a long time. But in Portsmouth, Virginia, there was quite a, uh, um, a viral uh viral <laughs> in 2020, but there, there was sort of a viral story that went out of people who were pulling a statue down and a person got their head bashed in by the statue as it was falling. And they were trying to pull some civil war statue, I guess, down. And uh, in this uh, takedown of the statue was illegal. It wasn't something that was uh, in an organized fashion, which, you know, that, that should be up to the right of a community if they want to vote to take something down. But this was not done in an organized fashion. This was something where Literally a mob gathered and they tore the statue down. And it turned out that some of the people leading that mob were politicians, Democrat politicians in that community. And, uh, and so the police chief, uh, after reviewing all the video, and she's a woman of color, this police chief, and she saw that there was a woman of color who was a, a politician who was leading this. And so she charged her. You know, she she filed charges against the woman because this was an illegal action. And now she's been fired, the police chief, for pursuing, you know, essentially uh, enforcement of the law. And that's in uh, Portsmouth, Virginia. I believe the police chief's name is Green is her name. Mm -hmm. um, just wondering if, if either of you guys have any thoughts on that. What happened to the, uh, the person that uh, the Democrat that was leading the, the riot? <laughs> Charges dismissed, I believe. <laughs> Charges dismissed. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? Were they? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, shucks. So. Uh, yeah, there you have it. Well, that sounds like, um, well, it sounds like, uh, what's the what's the term for some country that is uh, not got the rule of law anymore? It's just uh, every Banana man, Republic? A banana Republic. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Sounds like a banana republic. So uh, there you have it, Portsmouth. Good job, great job. Go ahead, this, Leon. this lawlessness is take, is taking over our society you now. Remember, we spoke about this situation where in um, in Missouri, I believe it was in Lewis. These people broke down the people's gate. They yeah, went on yeah. private property. The guy yeah. the guy pulled out his gun to, to protect himself, and they end up charging the guy and his wife. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's it's nothing here. All right. The police chief is doing her job, trying to put, um, stop the vandalism and all that kind of stuff and things like that. And now she's going to pay the price for doing her job. OK, for doing her job. Lawlessness is becoming a part mm. of our society at an unhealthy rate. And George Orwell, 1984, is coming true. The good <laughs> people are turning bad and the bad people are turning good in the eyes of society. And we have to yeah. do something about this and do something about this soon. Otherwise, we're going to be in big trouble in this great land of ours. Yeah. 
Well, then as we, uh, looks like we're getting near the end of the program and that is the time for our knucklehead noise patrol. And that's where we try and find something kind of ridiculous that somebody has said out there, usually a politician, but not always. And not in this particular case, um, after the, uh, election results came in and it has appeared that Biden has won, Whoopi Goldberg was on her show, the view. And what she said to, uh, Trump supporters was, uh, suck it up. Like we sucked it up. How dare you question the election? Uh, and then and she went on to say, uh, when you know who was elected four years ago, and she says that because this is uh, Trump derangement syndrome. She, she's she gone like four years without saying Trump's uh, name. But anyways, she said, when you know who was elected four years ago, Hillary Clinton didn't say, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right. Stop the count. She didn't say, this isn't fair. I'm not going. She didn't say any of that. So all of you know, uh, all of you now suck it up, suck it up like we sucked it up. And I'm thinking, oh, so we should just claim that the Russians were involved for four years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that and, how to suck it up? And, <laughs> I don't know. And, what and, all of a, and all of a sudden, clamor for the remove for the uh, the getting rid of the electoral college. Yeah, you know, that, yeah that kind of yeah, stuff too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And of so, course, the whole time being right on board and united, united like good little puppy dogs. And in <laughs> we're we're all going to be behind. We're going to put our differences into the past, and we're going to we're going to support our president Trump, who was legally elected. And so there were you know the us Democrats yeah, are going to be but not my right president board. for four years yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> she won't even say his name for four years <laughs> <laughs> Hillary Hillary I walked around made every excuse in the book as to why she lost none of it had to do with her being a horrible candidate and probably a horrible person none of it had to do with that but now that we have this situation now whoop is trying to tell us we should suck it up you know and even yeah. even even that is a lie. Even that is a lie because during during the two after the um 2016 election, Jill Stein who was supported <laughs> by the Democrats. She was a presidential candidate for the Green Party. She was challenging the results in in three states: in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. So this nonsense that Whoopi Goldberg is talking is just that a bunch of damn nonsense and some lies. Yeah. Well, you know what 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 disturbs me about it too is. You know, for as libertarian, I've I've voted for the last few libertarian candidates at the national level for I don't know the last three elections or so. But the you know we have never you know gone out and and burned everything down because our yeah. president. I, I can't right. remember the last time libertarians got upset and started destroying uh, their neighbor's property or claiming the Russians did. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's like. You know, it kind of like, well, you know, I, I wish Whoopi sucking it up would have actually sucked it up for four years. We might have yeah. had some sanity. <laughs> <in this country. laughs> anyway, we're, we're about at the end of the show. Uh, and so I wanted to uh, thank you all for joining us on this holiday weekend. And uh, uh, if you want to catch more of our shows, you can catch us at Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, oh, do, do we have an overtime session coming up? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to wrap this show up now and we will stick around for an overtime in case there is anything. Um, but, uh, I thank you all for joining us so much. And, uh, if you want to catch our shows, libertariancounterpoint.com, uh, or, uh, on Facebook at libertarian counterpoint, and we will see you at the next one. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Cheers. -bye.